Today guys we check out 15 plus features that were cut before release, features you'd argue were the backbone to this game. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and if you enjoyed this video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more cyberpunk on a daily basis be sure to subscribe. So the cyberpunk advertised let's say 12 months back promised a revolutionary open world RPG. Instead, and although I enjoy this game, in its current state, we got this. Where's my car? <laughs> really again. <laughs> really again. Really, just gonna land like that? You've got to be kidding me. And what you just saw doesn't even scratch the surface. The game is experiencing many, many problems. Yeah, not too long ago, CDPR came out and apologised about the current state of the game, releasing a roadmap promising to fix the buggy mess many people are dealing with. The first patch dropped yesterday, the 1.1 patch, and I can definitely feel a difference. Is this the beginning of a redemption arc for Cyberpunk? Well, what about all the features that were removed? Features which in my opinion this game's foundations were built upon. Now the 15 or so features removed from the game which we will get into don't for the most part singularly take much away from the experience we have right now. But when you compile them together, they certainly do. Now I just want to get this out of the way and make this point. I love this game, I uploaded a video yesterday called Cyberpunk is Beautiful, but how much better would it have been? if said features we will cover were not cut. So in no particular order people, let's get into it. So early on in the gameplay trailers and footage, we originally had a sixth skill tree, and you can see this on screen now within the very very early footage. We see the additions of constitution and strength. Now over time I do believe these were rolled up into one, which we see now as body, which is fair. But upon you completing the prologue of the game we have right now, a sixth skill tree does appear, but has absolutely no use whatsoever. People speculate that there was an intended sixth attribute based on Johnny Silverhand, as like I said the sixth slot right here doesn't show up until you get Johnny's implant in your body, that relic, after the heist mission. Now this is speculation and that isn't what this video is about, but whatever this sixth skill tree is or what it was for, is seriously interesting. Was it cut content? Will it appear in a future DLC? That's another question. Ok so moving on, and one of the few things which actually caught my attention really early on was the fact CDPR mentioned and did so on multiple occasions say that over 1000 NPCs in this game live by daily routines. I myself have done loads of testing here where I have followed some of the main NPCs and have found absolutely nothing of sort. This statement of NPCs living by daily routines in my opinion is something I feel they completely misrepresented when in fact what they actually meant was depending on the time of day. This will affect how many folk you see in the streets or certain missions tied to certain NPCs were a lot behind timed instances. Because I've struggled to find a single piece of evidence which proves this is indeed the case. 1000 NPCs definitely don't live by those daily routines as I was expecting anyway. Ok so moving on, and you guys remember the confirmations that certain NPCs would react to our street cred levels and choice of clothing and cyberware? The street cred system in what I have learned with over 300 hours in this game does nothing but unlock later side missions or gigs. I haven't seen a single dialogue option change based on what I look like, my appearance in terms of cyberware nor due to my street cred level. The only extra dialogue options I have seen are those added by specific life path choices. And even then, the outcome of said dialogue options going forward doesn't change anything in my experience. I also remember seeing people who played the game early state, things like fingernail colour would have an effect with certain NPCs. Well people I have been painting my nails pink every single time and I haven't encountered a single instance of this. In terms of cyberware, I understand you might hear the random odd NPC call out about your fancy cyber leg, but other than that I haven't seen or heard of nothing 
like how it was made out, cyberware would affect these paths. Okay, so character customization. Now the character customization has been compressed down quite a bit and it isn't like anything you'd expect from a futuristic open world RPG. In saying that, it isn't the worst I've seen, but it still isn't what we were originally shown and promised. At first there were gender options, body sliders etc etc, just in general many more options than what we have now. We did see from early trailers, things were always changing, but originally it did look promising. Now the reason I feel they diluted it down massively was also due to the fact there are rarely any instances in the game in which we see our own creations, we see our own these. Because another thing that was cut was third person cutscenes. These were said to pop up throughout the story. But in cutting these, it allowed CDPR to dilute down the character customization because it isn't all that necessary if we can't see our own creations, which is kind of sad. Another thing they got rid of was that way more in depth backstory beyond the life path we have now. Things like childhood heroes, key life events, why we are choosing Night City and many other things. All these things here were said to unlock things as we progress through the game. This is an RPG, so before we get into our appearance, we need to define our backstory. What you choose here will unlock different possibilities later in the game. But it was completely cut. Another feature that was removed from the game is Flathead. And although Flathead hasn't been cut from the game entirely, its original purpose has been, as the Flathead robot was actually supposed to be our in-game companion. Like here, yeah, once we got a hold of this thing, it stuck with us throughout the rest of our playthrough. Take a listen. Okay, let's equip the splint to our chipware slot. With this done, the bot will now follow us wherever we go. Alright, what else do we have here? Yep, people, one of many game changing features seemingly removed. This I can kind of understand to a degree, but actually, the more I think about it, it makes less sense. I was thinking maybe it would take away from certain builds like Netrunner builds, but if anything, I think a little companion like this would add to said builds. I just feel like most things mentioned and covered today, they realised they were running out of time and just removed features which wasn't entirely finished in time for that end product goal. That goal in getting us a game ready to play by the end of 2020. Which I guess you would agree wasn't the outcome anyway. Another feature many people including myself were disappointed to be removed was wall running and parkour. Now how far the plans were here for wall running we don't know. But what we do know is we actually saw somewhat gameplay of it in action when demonstrating the Mantis Blade cyberware. And quite frankly it looked amazing. This would have 100% been a feature many people including myself would have loved using and it would have made builds such as stealth builds that also more appetising. Again though guys, just another feature, which would have no doubt been fun to use, was removed. Another feature which has been cut is the mono wire and what they originally could do. In game now they are nothing more than a glowing whip to be enemies. But what they originally were supposed to offer is much, much more, as originally guys you'd probably know upon taking an enemy down from behind, using that stealth you originally could have jacked into his neural system and caused all kind of problems for the enemy, and the mono wire allowed you to do this at a distance. Here take a listen. Hey everyone, my name is Miles Tors and I'm one of the level designers working on Cyberpunk at CD Projekt Red. Um, I want to tell you something about my, one of my most favorite features that we're showcasing in this new demo. Uh, it's a cyberware called the nanowires, and they're basically a set of strings, almost like a garrot, that is attached to your arms. You pull them out and, and connect them, and that way you can stealthily kill people. Um, but you can also hack them from a distance, unlocking the ability to quick hack enemies and upload some powerful malware in them to make them basically shoot themselves and all that kind of cybernetic divinity and godhood that you'll want to have your hacking character do. Yep. Let's try something different. We're going to take this guy down and connect directly to his neural son. In the world of Cyberpunk, once you are jacked into a network, you have access to everything it connects to. Through this Maelstrom gang map, we've now connected to the gang hideout's internal network. This is the building's personnel system. Let's focus on the squad containing the Maelstrom ganger we just connected to. From here, 
we can deploy software that affects the whole squad. With our nanowire, we can even hack this guy's implants from a distance. But yes guys, that takedown from behind and jacking in, and these other features of the mono wire, which I'm pretty sure we all would have loved using, were cut from the game. So next up people, that challenging weather system. A weather system people who played the game early said was incredible, even mentioning lightning effects look next level. Now running the Panem side missions, I do remember a couple of quite impressive sandstorms, which look great. But other than that, I have had sunshine every single day. I've never experienced any kind of wet weather in terms of rain or acid rain or anything like that as they said was coming. Now some people think it might be a bug, I don't. I believe this also was another cut addition, which is a shame as the changing weather systems do bring open world games to life a lot lot more. Ok so next up guys we have car customization. Now the question is, was this actually cut? Was this ever actually a thing planned for this game? I have seen people say that CDPR never actually directly said that car customization was ever going to be a thing in this game. But actually guys, that's wrong and I have found evidence that confirms it was initially something at least planned for the game as a CDPR dev known as Miles Toast confirms it in this clip. So car customization, no matter what scale it was on, was a thing. But that's cool because for a long time now it's been known to be non-existent in the game. But guys, within one of the later trailers for this game, the Rise of the Dark Future trailer which showcased on October 15th, two months before this game released it confirmed interchangeable parts and tuning. Take a listen. These are for tunes who love the smell of exhaust and the roar of street wildlife. Their powerful engines and exchangeable parts make them perfect for tuning. Come on! Their powerful engines and exchangeable parts make them perfect for tuning. So unless she's referring to the Basilisk and Mitch, there ain't much in terms of upgrading anything when it comes to vehicles that I have experienced. You know any secrets? Let the world know down below. Another thing I actually haven't seen anybody else pick up on was the inspection system. This was a feature you could use to inspect certain things to help solve certain quests. Now I know we can read text from shards, but is there any other system within this game like what they explain here? You tell me. The inspection system allows us to take a closer look at the splinter. You can inspect specific items to reveal details that can help in solving quests. Ok so moving on and I won't make a massive drama out of this but it's still disappointing as early evidence states or suggests that you could indeed at least get new apartments across Night City. Yeah we know you take over Judy's place, yes you get a tent at Panem's and River lets you keep your stash there and depending on what ending you get you may get a nice apartment for about 5 minutes depending on how long you watch Judy or Panem in that shower. But other than that guys, you actually only have that one main apartment you more or less start the game with. Which is kind of disappointing. Ok so moving on, an age is back within the first trailers, although I don't remember CDPR ever confirming they're including these, but it was kind of clear to many, or it pointed in that direction, that a subway system was going to be included in this game, with it being at the bottom of the many levels to this vertical city. But in the release game, there are no such things. Yes, maybe the odd station you can use to fast travel, but there's no sight of a subway system at all. Also, a fellow player who goes by the name of Cybercrow posted this clip you can see to Reddit last month, where he actually found evidence in the game that there was originally going to be a monorail system, but it was left unfinished, as you can see by the video. What we see here looks like an unfinished project, possibly cut not too long before the game's release. I mean yes, I'd probably agree these ain't needed due to the fast travel points all over the map, but it is the small things like these which make these open world games feel way more alive. Ok so moving on, and although these haven't been completely cut from the game, the fact that there is so little in terms of experience with them, it feels like an overhyped false promise and that are those of brain dances. 
Now before this game's release, it was thought brain dances would be a thing you could indeed experience, even within your own apartment. Also, we've designated places on the map known as Brain Dance Arcades, where you can go and experience them, and even black market brain dances too. These, although most people don't realise how significant they are within the world of cyberpunk, they are one of those features missing that would put a whole new level of depth to many instances. But instead of the multitude expected, we hardly got five at best. And that's pushing I think, I can only remember three off the top of my head. Yeah, it's weird as there are so many you can find, but it just states your device is not compatible with them. Again, not a major feature, but these smaller things people do start to add up. Another thing I thought was going to have a massive impact on the way we see and play this game was the promised themes we would see across Night City. We had a trailer a couple of months before release showcasing different styles, as you can see on screen now. The problem is, I don't think they were actually cut from the game, I just feel they definitely weren't incorporated right, because until researching for this video, I completely forgot about any kind of different style which we were supposed to see, and although there's no doubt that these themes are seen within the game, it's the lack of representation with them that makes them feel like something underutilised, and well, basically missing from the released product. I'd say finish, but as we all know, this clearly isn't a finished game. Okay, so moving on guys, and lastly, AI, police AI, enemy AI, NPC AI, it is all just a giant mess. Now you won't need me to fill you in on the issues here, if you've played the game, you will know exactly what I am talking about. The mere fact we were promised, like I mentioned earlier, real time AI systems which allowed for incredible dynamism like the MPC daily cycle. Instead we have, and credit to Samurai and Reddit for accumulating most of this list, no MPC day or night cycle, and NPCs spawn and despawn outside of that player's view. If an NPC is doing an action, they will do that action forever until the player moves. NPCs that are not story or side quest related barely have one dialogue reply. If one NPC is assaulted, every other NPC in a large circle around that player will crouch to the floor in the same animation, even if they did not see the original assault. NPCs in cars will follow a specific route, if that route is even slightly interrupted, for example by your car, if you park in front of them, they will cease to move forever until you remove the obstruction. NPCs will not acknowledge the player if they run the player over with their car. NPCs will not attempt to steal their vehicle back, even if you steal it from them. NPCs will not attack you or defend themselves in any way or form, even if engaged upon with just fists. Please spawn around the player's vision when the player is wanted, forever, until they attempt to hide or drive away. Please do not attempt to question, warn or arrest the player for even the smallest crime committed. For example, if you bump into them or accidentally enter a private area. Police are incapable of driving cars and chasing the player if they drive away. Police will not attack hostile targets like gangs if they are not already doing so in an activity. Police will know if the player has attacked an NPC in the middle of the Badlands and spawn next to the player without vehicles. Scripted NPCs that have dialogue will say their dialogue, then proceed to stand there forever. They will also repeat the same dialogue if the player leaves the area and visits again later. And I mean guys, this list goes on and on and on. And considering this... We've greatly enhanced our crowd and community system to create the most believable city in any open world game to date. The city's streets are bustling with crowds of people from all facets of life, all living their lives within a full day and night cycle. So yeah, I don't think we got what we were promised. And the crazy thing is guys, even after putting this video together, I'm still playing and loving this game, even after 300 hours put in. And that reason being is because I still feel on all the bugs and glitches, the missing and cut features and content, I still think this game is great. The problem is, it was clearly released way too early. Many devs at CDPR didn't think the game would be ready until 2022, and now they are left with clearly an unfinished game. 
where patches which no doubt were needed before day one of release are being put together delaying what would have been DLCs, which we would have almost certainly had by now. And that DLC I'd probably guarantee you when it does eventually arrive will feature cut things from this game. Things which should have been there day one. Now the game's future although I love it I don't think is that bright. It's going to take a miracle to get that faith they have lost back. Will it be too late for them and the game by the time it's actually ready and finished? Many people think it will. Unfortunately as it stands, Cyberpunk is nothing more than one of many games which we have seen of recent time rush to be released only for it to fall at the first hurdle. And that's a shame. I wish CDPR the best as I know many lives depend on the company to do good and it's unfortunate for the many devs there to suffer due to what the game is now. And guys, on that note, the end of the video has arrived. No doubt you're going to flood the comments sections with many other missing features I've forgotten to mention. So let me know. Also tell me what you think about the future of this game. Do you think the 1.1 patch has taken this game a step further in the right direction? Let me know. But on that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Cyberpunk on a daily basis, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.